Some people think that the idea of salvation being by the grace of God through faith in the Messiah is simply a New Testament idea or something that began at the Reformation. In fact, the foundation of this doctrine goes way, way back before even the New Testament. As Jesus told his people on the day that he was risen from the dead, the scriptures foretold that the Christ would suffer, that he would rise again from the dead, that he would enter into his glory, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. Christ revealed that these things were prophesied in Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And as we continue to look at the first book of Moses, the book of Genesis, we're looking at things that were written more than 1,400 years before Jesus was born, and in fact, were written several hundred years before the human author Moses wrote them down in the first place. In Genesis chapter 12, we see a promise that God makes to Abram. And it is the second explicit gospel proclamation that is made in the book of Genesis. The first was also made by God in Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, the scriptures say, And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. This promise becomes the foundation of the new covenant doctrine that salvation is by the grace of God through faith in Christ. It is also the foundation of the idea that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in the name of Christ to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. I encourage you to go back and watch our overview video on the book of Genesis, where we overviewed the entire book in eight minutes. And in that particular overview, we discuss the fact that the book of Genesis has two main sections. The first main section is Genesis chapters 1 through 11, and the second main section begins in Genesis chapter 12 with this proclamation. In this main section, God is making a nation for himself, beginning with the calling of Abram, who he will later change his name to Abraham, and he makes from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the nation of Israel. Salvation then comes to the Jew first, to those who are descendants of this nation. But it is not simply a salvation for the Jewish people. It is a salvation in fulfillment of this promise made in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Now, this particular theme of this blessing that God intends to bring by according to promise, not according to works, not even according to the old covenant, but according to this promise, that this theme spreads throughout the entire Old Testament. We won't be able to look at every single reference that is important in regards to this, but we're going to focus in this video on this statement that we already read in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, another statement, promise that God makes, and then likewise a promise that he makes in Genesis chapter 22. All of these things are in keeping with this promise that was originally made here to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. All of these prophesy and tell that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in the name of Christ to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem, and likewise are the foundation for the so-called New Testament doctrine of salvation being by the grace of God through faith in Christ. In fact, this isn't just my opinion. The Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul both appeal to this line of promises to be the foundation for what we consider to be the New Covenant idea. You may recall that Jesus said that he did not come to abolish the old, but to fulfill it. And this is, in fact, how he did so. He came to fulfill this promise that in Abraham, and particularly in Abraham's seed, that all the families of earth would be blessed. Let's look at how the Apostle Peter preached in Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, Peter is preaching to his Jewish people. He says, it is you who are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. The Apostle Peter quotes in this sermon from Genesis chapter 22 verse 18, in which God is referring back to the promise that he made to Abram back in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. This promise that he would bless all the families of the earth. As Peter is speaking to the Jewish people, he says that God first sent the Messiah to them, 
Salvation is first to the Jew. And he sent his son, Jesus the Christ, to the Jew to bless them. Many people talk about the blessing of God, and they think about it simply in material terms. But Peter makes it very explicit that God sent his son to them to bless each and every one of them by turning them from their wicked ways. This is what is known as repentance. The Christ came into the world to bless all the families of the earth, and that blessing comes through repentance. Much better than having a full bank account is having our sins be able to be forgiven. And so the blessing that God promised to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, that he again reiterated in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, that was sent first to the Jewish people and then to all the families of the earth, was that in the name of Christ, if people will humble themselves before the living God, will confess that we need salvation for our sins because they are abundant. If we would turn from doing what seems right in our own eyes and like sheep going astray and would turn to him in true faith, that we would receive the blessing of the forgiveness of our sins. Likewise, the Apostle Paul appeals to the promise made to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. The Apostle to the Gentiles writes the scripture, For seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham the believer. The Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul both appeal to this promise, and they're woven together with the fact that salvation comes not by works, but by faith in what God has promised. In fact, just a few verses earlier, the Apostle Paul quotes from Genesis chapter 15. It says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 6, Even so, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Therefore, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. As God declared a promise in Genesis 12 verse 3 that he intended to bless all the families of the earth in Abraham, in Genesis 15 we see that Abraham was blessed by putting his faith in what God promised. Likewise, as God reiterated that promise in Genesis chapter 22 verse 18, we see that all who put their faith in God's promise to bring a promised Messiah, the seed, that they likewise will be blessed by having their sins forgiven. Whether they are literal, physical descendants from Abraham and are Jewish in their national heritage, or if they are of the other families of the earth and are Gentiles. Salvation comes to both the same way, although it is offered first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. Salvation has always been and will always be by repentance and faith in God's promised Messiah, the seed. As we trace that terminology of the seed, we saw it in Genesis 22, verse 18, it is important that we understand that this seed is explicitly fulfilled in Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, the apostle Paul makes a significant theological observation based on the grammar of what Moses wrote in the book of Genesis. There are too many passages to cite any individual, but there are a number of places where this same observation could be made. And the Apostle Paul rightly states, starting in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds, is referring to many, but rather to one, and to your seed, that is Christ. Moses does not say plural descendants or plural seeds, but says seed, is speaking to the one in whom this blessing would come. It's in Christ. As you read through the book of Genesis, it seems that the promised seed is Isaac, who is a type of the one who is to come. And we see God continuing to choose. He chooses Jacob, and he makes of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob a great nation, to be sure. But the descendant, the singular seed, is Christ. In the Old Testament scriptures, most modern English translations often translate these passages in the plural, taking that singular reference, that singular seed in Hebrew, as what is called a collective singular. 
If I were to say that we all gathered together as a local church body on Sunday to gather, and we gathered as one body or as one man, we say that, okay, well, we're using the collective singular based on the context. And most English translators have taken that singular seed and translated it either with the ambiguous offspring or descendants, plural. But the Apostle Paul's point is that Moses didn't write seeds. He didn't write descendants. He wrote to your seed. And as the Apostle Peter quoted Genesis 22, 18, in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. He was pointing to Christ. As we proclaim Christ from the Old Testament, we don't get to change things, even from a plural to a singular or from a singular to a plural. But we see that God intended all along for repentance to be proclaimed in the name of his promised seed, that is Christ, to all the families of the earth. This began in Jerusalem from God's chosen people, the nation of the Jews. But this is not just a salvation to the Jews, that the, the Messiah, the Christ, has come into the world to bless all of us, every family of earth, by turning us from our wicked ways. This blessing is found by repentance and humble faith in the Messiah who suffered, who rose again on the third day, and who entered into his glory, who is seated at the right hand of the Father on high, and who is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead, to gather a people to himself, all who have believed upon him from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, and every people, and to bring furious wrath upon those who persist in their rebellion and sin and refuse to believe God's testimony concerning his Son. Are you hidden in Christ today? I urge you to flee from the wrath that is to come. Believe upon the Son and find the blessing of salvation for your sins in his name. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing so that you won't miss any of our future videos.